By less than half a tenth of a second, Leonard Roderick was beaten to the Delano Pearl Award by David Krikorian in car 66. Krikorian's Hodges Walter racing contract uh, may not be renewed for next year, so DK is certainly trying to show off for potential car owners here. Chris Davenport in car number 6 led opening practice, the alert driver very much on alert as his drive may be up at the end of the year. However, things started going downhill ever since then. Uh, Davenport's form in second practice didn't improve and there were actually quite a few strange incidents that happened uh, after the uh, first practice session. In practice 2 there was a power outage here at the circuit which uh, was is disastrous because that was on Friday night and uh, Gabriel Messina nearly had a very large incident uh, in turn 3. Uh, Messina is of starting this race with his backup car and uh, this all comes right after the announcement that this could be the very last year that the TM Master Cup Series races here at the Autodromo Daniel Estevem. Of uh, Daniel Estevem, of course, the uh, the famous Brazilian driver who raced in uh, not only in Formula A but in uh, in Indy cars as well. There you see Gabriel Messina driving the car he ran uh, attempted Indianapolis with, starting at the back of the field. But this has been a very uh, it's an odd weekend. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Uh, this interesting Saturday night race has been kicked off by David Gregorian. The start was delayed by 15 minutes because of another power outage here at the circuit, so, uh, things aren't exactly going so well for this event so far. We hope nothing of that magnitude happens again. David Gregorian got Adrian Devereaux, his teammate, on the inside. This is the first lap. Adrian Devereaux is definitely not playing nice. He's going for the lead, and I think DK was a little surprised. I don't think he expected Devereaux to do a dive bomb on that, but Devereaux is a title contender. He's got a championship to win, so does this man, Michael Sykes, in car number five. Devereaux trying to become the first man to win three Master Cups in a row. Michael Sykes trying to win one in his swan song year as he is retiring at the end of the year. Gaspar Sous in the double zero car, very quick in practice. He's trying to make up for that, uh, make up for the de deficit early. And uh, we got uh, the 67 car, that is uh, Daniel Melrose in with a cut tire on lap three. Melanie Cleveno, car number 12, is on the charge. She has not won a race this year. Uh, but the Lynx driver nearly won the Carriala Grand Prix and has been a uh, podium contender on and off throughout the season. The two Gesslers found their way to the front of the field, Matthias Taub and Arto Kekkonen. Taub leads the championship. His uh, points lead is in danger tonight. However, um, I think Taub in that 10 car uh, is going to try to make as much of it as he can. He's never won on an oval, surprisingly, but the Swede has been very, very dependable on many ovals in the past. He uh, nearly won the round of Ohio, but for um, some lap traffic, that lap traffic in the form of Adrian Devereaux, interestingly enough, um, I wonder if that could come into effect. Zelda Ashby in this 55 car is still technically a championship threat, but she's going to need a little bit of luck in order to get it. Uh, Ashby in this 55, though, uh, we could see the first time in the modern era that a team has won the Drivers' Championship on their debut season. Uh, here is Michael Sykes in the 5. In the red five, trying to set up that black, purple, and orange 66 of DK coming into turn one. DK seems to be preferring the middle line. Only problem is that's not the fastest way around the track for most other people. Scott Bates in the 88 car, going right on by Michael Sykes for the lead. Bates, a master of uh, the super of the super speedways, this Fontana in Indianapolis. This track is technically the world's smallest super speedway. Um, the drivers aren't completely flat out around this track. Um, at least late into a run. On the first couple laps of a fuel run, uh, and a tire run rather, they seem to be. Chris Davenport in the six car, going, uh, trying to get around Arto Kek, and then Arto doesn't quite shut the door, gives Davenport enough space, a little early for anything silly, really, because, uh, uh, well, we've got, of course, any accident here could be absolutely massive. We've seen a couple uh, of very unfortunate accidents here in the past. Packer Carroll back in the two car. Um, the Volpe let him back in this car. They have full confidence in him. They're going to try to get Packer into victory lane before the end of the year. Michael Sykes trying to go three wide with both the Gesslers. There's Arto Kekkonen sort of closed the door on him, but uh, I think they must. Uh, Arto Spotter must have told him Taub outside, and Taub bails out of that situation. Davenport in the six car had that car a little bit sideways, but uh, Davenport caught that one. DK takes advantage. Here comes Adrian Devereaux in the uh, car number one. On the inside, that distinctive uh, blue and orange car on the inside there. Got uh, one of the, that's uh, Melanie Cleveno, Leonard Roderick, Luciano Savarol in doing uh, doing a very good job for the home crowd. Melrose going a lap down, no one really having any problems with him. Melrose, uh, he's a professional, staying out of the way. DK having a good run here. Hello, Kurt. Remember me? Oh, I'm 
I'm sure you do now. Every time I wanted to talk to you in the past, you would just run away like you always do. <laughs> There's no escaping me this time. Apologies for all of the static there. It appears that uh, having some problems with the radio communications. Uh, Kurt Pliskin is running in 13th in his Lycoya. He's had some strong runs here in the past. And uh, Pliskin, who won earlier in the year at Sweden, trying to cap off what's been a very, very up and down season. Uh, all of his highs have had uh, far too many lows to go along with them. He has nearly 10 DNF so far this season. Luciano Savaral in car number three, trying to win in front of the home crowd. The, uh, the Brazilian. As, uh, of course, uh, the Brazilians very much get behind their local drivers. And a lot of local Brazilian, uh, Brazilian drivers have shown up for this race in the past. Savaral in this three car, trying to win one for Hodges Walter Racing. He's leaving this team at the end of the year. Uh, we believe a new deal for him is uh, expected soon. As Matthias Taub is building up a bit of a lead right there. There's David Krikorian in the 66 car in second. Taub in the 10 car. Watch for that uh, Watch for that black car in the background. Taub running a bit high into turn one. I'm not quite sure why he's doing that. Here comes Krikorian uh, on the inside to try to get around him. No. Taub ran turn one very, very high. I'm not quite sure why he did that. But uh, right behind, you'll notice Leonard Roderick entering the frame in car number four. And Luciano Savaral as DK goes, tries to get by Taub for the lead. Doesn't quite have it there. Um, we've, seen a, we've seen a photo finish at this track before. Um, that is a that is a very strong possibility to happen again tonight with the racing we've been seeing. As there goes Leonard Roderick right along the inside of David Krikorian, and Roderick now having a run at Matthias Taub. Roderick get, peeks under the inside of the ten, and he's going to sweep into the lead. Roderick leads that lap. Car number four, the Aperture Science Volpe, is having a very very strong start to this race. Ben Atkins in the 50 car in the pits. There is a problem with that car. Uh, we believe he may have scraped the wall just a little bit. I don't see any marks on it there, but uh, there was apparently uh, we, there was apparently a report that the 50 did tag the wall. And Arto Kekinen. Since you seem to have so many problems going quickly, I think I'm going to make sure that you die slowly. It's at a pace you're familiar with. Um, I didn't hear anything there. Uh, that's interesting. I have Jenny Kuznetsov in car number eight was uh, also one of the drivers that was, uh, he was particularly quick in practice, but only on long runs. He doesn't seem to have the short run speed in this uh, car number eight. He's got a new teammate this week in Dan McKay, and actually Dan McKay has also been having rather uh, good luck on long runs in uh, the uh, car number seven. The right, car right in front of Kuznetsov, that is Gabriel Messina making his debut in the series, car 170. Uh, the uh, the Animax car, and then right alongside him is Scott Stoidler in the Manicor. Here's Melanie Cleveno in car number 12, and is letting Scott Bates go on the inside. Packer Carroll coming up behind the uh, coming up behind Melanie there, and there's Ben Atkins trying to hold the line. Ben Atkins has sometimes had a problem with doing that this year. Um, the 50 car has uh, sort of been a nuisance this weekend, but uh, he uh, picked it up in qualifying. Uh, and uh, out-qualified Rossini, which is something that I don't think we've seen all that much. It doesn't feel like it at any rate. Here's Greg Woodard in car number 41. He's been having a uh, decent night so far. Woodard and uh, that 99 car, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., have slowly been making their way through the For field. For some reason, I feel like impaling you on a spear. What the hell was that, Mike? Was that you? No, you blittering idiot. For that, your death will be more painful than I originally intended. Well, uh, Mike, did you hear that too, or was that only on my end? Okay, so it appears that, um, well, that's interesting. You can hear what the drivers are saying, but not what the crews are saying. Luciano bails for the pit lane. Adrian Devereaux comes flying in pits very late to commit in. That, that was almost a collision between the Hodges Walter teammates. Devereaux was going to pit with the three car, apparently. No matter what, Devereaux very much determined to beat Savaral. Especially now that Savaral is leaving the team. Devereaux is trying to make a statement here that uh, Luciano is indeed no match for him. Oh, whoa, whoa. I thought that was going to happen. The 41 car pulled out right in front of Kevin Dwyer. Don't think Dwyer expected that. And uh, oh, we got the three car sideways in the pit lane. Luciano sideways in the middle of the pit lane, and that's going to be a post-race investigation, I would expect, between Greg Woodard and Kevin Dwyer. 
And uh, Woodard merging back onto the track. Doesn't look like there's any damage to the 41. And uh, looks like we may have a look at what's going on here with Matthias Taub. Oh, Ashby was trying to pit in. And oh, he just ran right into the back of Luciano Savaral. Taub was determined to gun it and get out and uh, clear Ashby before Ashby uh, turned into her pit stall. I'm not quite sure why he thought that was going to work. And for and for for the guy who's leading the championship, that's a really really critical mistake. Um, he's uh, there's def definitely de oh we got 41 up in smoke. So that contact with Dwyer must have done some damage to the right front suspension on that car. But um, considering the amount of smoke coming out of that car, that could be completely unrelated. Uh, Woodard car 41. Oh come on, not again. Now that your race is over, get a good look at Mike, because it may be the last you ever see of him. Greg Woodard, car 41, is the first retirement of the night, and uh, it's very disappointing. He was having a, a solid run. As we have a caution coming out, uh, we appear to have debris on the racetrack, possibly from that 41 car of Greg Woodard, as you see Arto Kekkonen here in the frame in car number 9. Uh, here is, under under caution, Packer Carroll, car number two, pitting. The uh, second after signs Volpe. He's been having us. Oh, contact. You ran into Ian Cooper. Whoa! Quiggles Jr. gets that car into two wheels. Now, that was a little uncalled for, I think. Quiggles Jr. bulldozing into the side of Packer Carroll in the pit lane. And Packer... Who is he? Cock machine, though. I was reading up on some of Stalin's torture methods, and I thought to myself, that's very tame. Too tame, perhaps. <laughs> I can do better. And you're going to be the guinea pig. Uh, Oh, well, we have some team radio that's apparently working uh, reasonably well. With Yevgeny Kuznetsov and his uh, and the uh, crew chief over there. That's the same Vitaly that owns the um, the Rus Autosport team that runs in the Arla Elite Series and in uh, several and a couple other junior categories. He's actually run a couple Master Cup races. As you see right there, all of the uh, pit lane collisions that we've had are going to be investigated after the race. It is an alert 1-2 with Michael Sykes leading Chris Davenport. The 55 at the front of the line, Zelda Ashby, is the last car on the lead lap. So Ashby really, really needs to pick it up real quick. Luciano Savarol off the lead lap. So is Matthias Taub in car number 10. So this could be a big opportunity for Michael Sykes, but it's a slow restart for the outside lane there as Ashby bottles them all up. And look at all of them go by on the inside. There goes Adrian Devereaux. There goes Scott Bates, David Krikorian. And a slow stop at the 66 car. And Sykes getting swamped. There goes Scott Bates. Rodder coming by. Look at Vidal in the 36 car. Joao Paulo Vidal into the back. Whoa, we almost have a big one there. And uh, Vidal in the 36 car. That was very, very close indeed. Vidal goes up into Michael Sykes, gets into Davina Henton, and around he goes. Oh, save it, save it, save it. Oh, this could be bad. Oh, no, Vidal. What a save by Joao Paulo Vidal. He's not a regular in this series, despite this being, uh, I do believe, the third, se third season he's competed in. But Joao Paulo Vidal, pat on the back for saving that one. That looked like that could have been a very, very big accident. Caution, of course, is out, as you see on top. But uh, uh, also... Han Look out, Darren. I'm coming to get you, Darren. I'm going to paint the inside of your car the same color of the Tutinos. Oh! Oh. <laughs> well, isn't that ironic? Fisticuffs behind the wall as Darren Cardell and Ben Atkins teams have started throwing fists at each other. Uh, we'll update you on that as it progresses. As Carlos Donzello in the 03 car running one of the, one of his fintech cars from earlier in the season. This is a road course car, but uh, Ian Masterson um, uh, has kind of borrowed this car from fintech. That's why all of their uh, fintech sponsors are still on the car. And here's Ryan Matthews in this race with the promoter's option. Kind of odd to see Matthews getting the promoter's option for this race, but your wife told me that you always look great in red. Join us. More radio chatter that uh, we can't actually hear. That's a little disappointing. Uh, Chris Davenport in car number six has been uh, really m marching his way uh, towards the front of the field. 
Davenport in this six car really has not had the best rookie season despite a win at Quincy. Uh, in practice, he's written the car off way too many times and his confidence has really suffered from that. But on the but at Fontana, he did very well earlier in the year. He did very well at Quincy, which is uh, fairly similar to this track. And so it uh, seems like Davenport may have found a home on some of the higher bank tracks uh, that the series runs. Davenport. You're married to the lady in red, but you don't have any red on you. Hmm. Let's change that. Davenport in the six car as we uh, look at him, a little bit of a replay of him as he cut through traffic. A couple laps into the run, that's how he got through so many of those cars as quickly as he did. Uh, so Davenport really dropping the hammer very early in this one. He uh, is desperate to get another win to his name because uh, Sykes has rather thoroughly beaten him in the intra-team battle. Both drivers in that team have one win, but Chris Davenport, oh, I wouldn't be racing Michael Sykes for the, uh, for the lead right now as hard as I, as I am if my drive's on the line because Sykes is in the title hunt. Davenport's not, and um, I have a feeling the team is yelling at Davenport over the radio to at least let, give Michael Sykes a bit, of, uh, a bit more of a shot because Adrian Devereaux's right there. There's Gabriel Messina on the 170 car. Uh, as you see, uh, uh, that car there, he's got the front end all pulled off of that thing. So Messina's debut not going quite as planned, but he's uh, logging laps so far, and that's what he needs. We believe there's an independent trophy ride for Messina next year. Melanie Klebno is running up in 17th place. Uh, it's a bit of a downfall, actually, from where she was earlier. She hasn't been terribly strong on uh, the ovals this year, but early in this race, she seemed to, have, uh, seemed to be running quite well. But uh, the Swiss driver... Looking to get around Kurt Pliskin in the 16. Melanie, we never met before, but from what everyone has told me, you have a heart of gold. I would like to rip it out of you so I could see it for myself. Um, again, can't hear much there, but we're on board now with the, um, we're on board with uh, Melanie, it looks like, going through traffic. Oh, we got Troy Adams there. No, this is, uh, we're on board with Henton, actually. These two Lynx cars, very difficult to tell apart in traffic. Henton is back in 31st, having a really bad night, but uh, this 11 car, whatever adjustments they made to it under that last yellow, it certainly worked because Henton is one of the quickest cars on track right now. That's Archer Harris, an independent trophy driver. Uh, right there, Archer moves over for Henton. That 79 car, uh, to say it's been um, uh, competitive would be a lie, uh, but uh, Harris is staying out of it. Managed to get here. I must admit, I didn't expect such a profound and thought provoking response. From the bottom of my heart, Mr. Quiggles, I thank you for this conversation, and I hope we talk again sometime soon. A very random but very, very well thought out statement there by, uh, by Quiggles Jr. Um, although I have no idea who he was talking to there, uh, because I couldn't hear anything. Here is Dan McKay in the second cat, so we haven't shown him all night, but, uh, he's having a very strong night. He's, uh, all the way up in seventh. He started way in the back after, uh, nearly wrecking his car in qualifying, but, um, the Canadian easily having his best run, uh, to date in this series. So Dan McKay coming back very strongly. Uh, Leonard Roderick in car number four pits on lap 99, so we're at the two-thirds distance, or very close to it. And uh, Chris Davenport, who's, th who's currently leading the race, is uh, waiting a little bit longer to pit. Here he comes in, lap 101, car six hits pit lane, Kekkonen follows suit in car number nine. As we got a problem on track for the second Volpe of Packer Carroll in car number two, this time not of his own doing. That is a random mechanical failure, and that's a bit, that's very disappointing because Packer, uh, well, in that two car, needs a good run, I think, to boost his own confidence. As Matthias Taub in car number 10 has assumed the lead of the race. Uh, there you see Kurt Pliskin there in the 16. Messina staying out of everyone's way. It's good for a rookie. Um, Gabriel Messina having a strong uh, debut, I think. Uh, Taub in this 10 car, though, he's never won in a Noval. He's been close, though, a couple times. Davenport going under Roderick, and he's going right on by. As you may have also noticed, um, the 11 car has certainly been throwing the dice on pit strategy, so um, Davina Henton could be a very serious contender here as the night wears on. Davenport, though, in the 6 car, uh, fastest lap of the race in car number 6. 
Kevin Dwyer in car 72 is running back in 30th place. The Junos have not been particularly... Kevin, your father is very disappointed in you. Would you like to meet him again so that he can express his disappointment in you properly? <laughs> well, uh, Kevin Dwyer, the son of the uh, late six-time Master Cup champion Benny Dwyer, running back in 30th. The Juno has not been terribly wor has not been working terribly well on this track, and uh, hopefully uh, we can fix these radio problems by the end of the night. Matthias Taub in car number 10 is uh, still hanging on to the lead. Ian Cooper back there in the triple seven car. There's a lot of guys I'd feel um, safe uh, behind me. That is not one of them. Joao Paulo Vidal in the 36 car is running in second place. Uh, so the, the uh, diminutive Brazilian could steal the Independence Trophy lead with a strong finish. This is his last Independence Trophy run. He wasn't even expected to have an Independence Trophy run at all, but Ian Masterson's team filled the void that Evans Motorsports left, and he's making the most of it, but he's I think he's going to need something like a podium finish in order to take the Independence Trophy lead. And again, he doesn't want to let that 11 go by because Chris Davenport's coming, and Davenport is running in third. Uh, he doesn't have much of a choice there. The Gessler-powered Lynx car of Henton just flies right on by. Henton up into second. Davina, I remember a few years ago you told me that you wanted to die while wearing your favorite dress. I hope you're wearing it right now. Henton's hearing something going on with that car, maybe. Um, so this, there could be a big problem going on with that 11 car. And uh, there you see in the background Davenport going around the uh, 36 car of Vidal. Donzello is taking his lone Fintech car up to 14th place. So definitely he's giving the home crowd something to cheer about is Messina. I don't think Messina quite saw him there. But uh, Donzello has, gotten, has been on the pole here in the past. So he certainly knows his way around this joint. Here's the six car of Chris Davenport, who's really impressing me tonight in this uh, American Launch Energy Racing Team Inglesby. The, uh, the future of Alert, Inglesby, and Davenport is all very much up in the air. We're not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, we could see an Alert tie-in possibly with a uh, Lennard, because Lennard's slated to come back in the series. Michael Sykes in the five car uh, has been uh, linked with a sort of breakaway team with this, uh, with this, uh, this squad could... Uh, split into two different organizations with um, Alert going one way and um, and uh, what's left of Flash Racing that's uh, in that team going another way. So Davenport uh, ch trying to chase down Davina Henton in the 11 right here. He's got to deal with Lewis Kingston, Kevin Dwyer still out there. 72 car really not handling well and it shows the 74. His teammate Zach Duff is having an equally disastrous evening. But uh, Davenport in the 6 car definitely trying to save his career. He's trying to set up Henton. There's Henton's teammate, though, up there, Melanie Clevno, and I don't really think Davenport wants to see that because I have a feeling that Clevno is not going to help his case. Quiggles Jr. is up into ninth place, who's, ch who's chasing, of all people, Robert Nelson down for eighth. Quiggles Jr. is having a very strong night, a very quiet evening for this 99 car in that, uh, in that blue livery that he's got there, that blue and green um, going on there. <clears throat> but... Uh, Right, uh, but uh, Quiggles Jr. ran in the Arla series last year, so he's got a lot of short track experience, even though it's not really a short track. Robert Nelson in, uh, is running up in eighth place in the 06 car now. He has very, very little experience, but he's redeeming himself this evening in the 06 car. BKR, BKR Australia has really done a good job with that car. Right in front of them is Troy Adams in the 18 car now troy adams has no ride lined up for 2014 because we have learned that he will not be returning to nemoto next year and note that vaguely worded term returning to nemoto because he's sunny could be buying into this team and he could be on board there so this 18 car um we're not quite sure what oh we got kevin dwyer up in smoke in the 72 so whatever problem is going on there it's clearly terminal smoke. That's too bad. I was really looking forward to having some fun with you. Well, Dwyer's night comes to an end. They've had to detune those uh, Inglesby engines just to make sure that they last the whole distance. Davenport uh, in that six car has been content to run behind Cariola winner Davina Henton um, for a while. I'm kind of surprised he's waited as long as he has, but oh, he's bragging in a little closer. There he goes. He applies the pressure, sweeps on by. 
That's a very, very veteran move there by Davenport in that six car. Much, much to my surprise, because the, Dav the Chris Davenport of earlier in the year might have just bumped the back of the 11 car and caused a huge crash, but that was a very, very controlled move by Davenport, and he has really been one of the stars of the evening because um, uh, this is just this is just sort of a breakout performance almost, even more so than his uh, than his win at Quincy earlier in the year, which he admittedly kind of backed into, but he's having a stellar night so far. Davenport now trying to get around uh, Melanie Clevno. Is Clevno going to give him a hard time? A little bit, it looks like. Uh, Clevno not entirely giving him the most space, but just enough space. Uh, probably there. As you see, Matthias Taub in car number 10. Not really having the best of luck with the lap traffic, but he's not exactly getting held up by them either. Um, so this 10 car has got a fairly solid lead right now, despite that front end damage he suffered earlier in the event. Leonard Roderick is up to fifth with Troy Adams um, uh, ways behind him. So Roderick having a very strong evening so far in this four car. He's uh, ha He has uh, three wins this year, but... Um, Get out, fool! Well, Adams in that 18 car had a pretty big slide uh, not too long ago when he was running behind Adrian Devereaux there in the one. So uh, uh, Troy Adams is not exactly having... Um, an ideal handling car, despite the fact that he's having a strong showing so far. He might have been burning his tires off too quickly. As Davenport is making a charge for the lead, he's trying to reel in Matthias Taub, which he's, who he's been slowly gaining on. Roderick's running in fifth, but everyone's going to need to make another stop again, uh, unless we get a caution late in the race. Um, so we have pit stops with less than 10 laps to go, apparently. Um, looks like we're seeing our, we're, go, we're expecting people in around lap 145, which is... Hey, uh, can one of you guys tell me who that yellow car is back there? Leo, do you remember me? Wait a minute, what? It's been too long since we've spoken. It, it can't be. Yes, it is. Roderick peels off, so we've got one car, we got the four car peeling off a little early. Leonard Roderick in the four. Expecting cars in around lap 145, which is about five laps to go. I don't, nobody I think can make it to the end, unless they are a couple of laps down already. Matthias Tau been on lap 144. Davenport, 146. We've got a couple cars still circulating. There's Barton Sandy in the 05 in. Kuznetsov, Duff still in. Michael Sykes in the five is making his, oh, whoa, Arto Kakinen. That was bad timing. That could have ended in a huge disaster for Michael Sykes, but Sykes in the five as he leaves pit lane for a splash and dash. We're looking now to see where the six car is. Where's the six, where's the 10? We're, uh, those two cars fairly distinct. There's Davenport behind him. So Michael Sykes has beaten his teammate in a pit stop battle. But now can Davenport catch up to the five and have another run at him? I don't think so. Davenport's got a ways to go and not enough time to get there, I think. But Michael Sykes in the red five could be staring at another podium result for the Welshman in his final season of racing in this series. Luciano Savarol in front of him there, not exactly having the best of runs there, but Michael Sykes in this red five desperately needs to chase this man, Matthias Taub, but it doesn't look like he's going to have enough time to do that. Matthias Taub in car number 10, he's pretty much controlled the second half of this race. Uh, he didn't, hasn't led the most laps, um, but it looks like Matthias Taub is going to win his first ever race in an oval and his second of the year. So Matthias Taub extends his points lead with a strong drive tonight. Michael Sykes in second, Chris Davenport in third position. Davenport has led the, mo led the most laps, stole the lap leader bonus from his teammate. Davina Henson came home fourth, Roderick Quiggles Jr., Vidal, all his strong runs, Arto Kakinen, Pliskin, and Robert Nelson rounds out the top ten. Round of applause for the Australian. I don't think anyone expected that out of Nelson, uh, given what happened to him earlier in the year at Quincy. No mention of Tom Moore at all this evening, but Tom Moore in that 52 car, fantastic drive, very quiet drive, but a pat on the back for Tom Moore nonetheless. Melanie Cleve, no 12th, Johans and Troy Adams. Adams fell back in that last round of pit stops. Donzello and Devereaux's runs, I think, could have gone stronger along with Bates and Ashby. You have Jenny Kuznetsov and Lewis Kingston round out the points. And here's how the championship results look. No surprise, Matthias Taub is just slowly edging away from Michael Sykes. Devereaux and Ashby are going to need a little bit of help. Anyone from anyone underneath 7th in points, that's Melanie Cleveno on back, is out of championship contention. Chris Davenport sneaks his way into the top 20 in points with his finish here this evening. 
And let's have a look at the Independence Trophy. Tom Moore has overtaken Lecklider. So Tom Moore, who nearly won the Independence Trophy last year, is now sitting on top with just a few races to go. He doesn't have another race to, uh, on his calendar. Ben Huron, though, is still a threat in that 43 car, and so is Danny Savin, both of whom participated in the round of Colorado. But with Matthias Taub finally scoring his second win of the year, it's going to take quite a bit for the rest of the field to catch him in the Master Cup. Dan, stop lying to all of the viewers. That's not what really happened. Here, let me show you who really won this one. <laughs> yes, I have returned. <laughs> Just know that slowly but surely the world is descending into darkness. <laughs>